Okay, let's hope the stream works. Okay, no audio. Ah, oh, g'day, Philip. That was quick. I'd barely even gotten started. I was just waiting to see who would turn up and whether the stream would cope with the 1080. I'm um, just waiting for my encoding laptop to start telling me that the settings are too high or something. Philip, are you getting 1080 there? 1080p? G'day Whiteox. Good evening Marwe. Uh, you guys all getting 1080p and no drop frames at the moment? Oh my goodness. This old iron has the um, the rubber handle. It's basically turned to hard rubber now, <laughs> hard plastic now. This thing's got to be getting on 12 years old now. I still like it. Yep, 1080, 30 frames per second. Thank you very much, Philip. I appreciate that. And the nice thing is my laptop isn't chucking a fit, so... Seems like we're all good. Excellent. YouTube YouTube algorithm tried to screw me again. Yeah, you're quick enough this time, Cry J. Alrighty. Well, tonight I am building a couple of um, internal relay boards that a person that I know wants for. Um, these are for the USB relay boards so they can switch hard drives internally for data recovery and things like that. Now I could do these as a stencil but I've only got to do three so it kind of defeats the purpose. I figured I'll do them by hand. Yeah, I'll just get all the parts that I need here. Right, yeah. Get my tweezers. I need my alcohol. Not for drinking. <laughs> uh, get my flux. Alright. I uh, need some more napkins. There we go. A couple more napkins. Alright. Cry J, the iron I bought for my electronics training back in the 90s is still with me. Okay, that's a seriously old iron then. Uh, this one I got when I started doing fairly um, fairly serious production work before I started doing reflow in the oven and yeah, this one's lasted a good couple of thousand boards the handle is very much like a Hako a Hako, I think it's a 900 series or something like that anyway, I can't get as many tips as I want for it but I find the best tip on this is a 1.2 millimeter chisel type tip it does the job well. I do have to crank the heat up a lot on it it's one of the things that annoy me a little bit about it so we're gonna put the extractor on uh, hopefully that's not too loud for you guys I'm just gonna shift this to okay And I've got to remember everything here. All right. Start by dot soldering. Oh, come on, you've got to be warm. What are you? That is not extracting the fumes. I'm going to have to bring it in closer. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be getting a 951. Like everything, though, it's a case of time and money. More money. It just takes time to collect that money. Alright.
what extractor is that? This is a um, car interior filter, uh, HEPA, you know, HEPA filter, with the uh, activated carbon insert, so it picks out the gas as well. And the fan itself is just a 12 volt, uh, 1 amp, 120 millimeter fan. It's a bit loud because it, the back of it is just exposed. So I need to build a containing box for it, but uh, I've been too lazy. The only thing I hate about the 951 is the annoying beeping. Yeah, I hear that beeping go off with uh, STS's work and Lewis's work, so, and I uh, completely agree. <laughs> I'm going to have to hot air this here, which is going to be the um, resonator. Uh, I can't do that with soldering, with the normal soldering stick. Uh, let's get some parts down on here. Yeah, my way, I've often considered uh, if I do get a 951 to crack it open and disable that buzzer in it. Uh, normally what I would do with this sort of work is I would have all three boards laid out and then work on them simultaneously but that's just not going to work with me doing it like this yeah, come on let's get some alcohol clean up these tips oh, g'day Jason why are you here? you've got stuff to fix oh well, enjoy the entertainment have a good laugh. Right. But nice of you to visit. Honestly, I don't know how Lewis manages to squeeze out his flux so well. Maybe it's just my syringe. Maybe it's because I'm in the southern hemisphere. But it is blimmin' hard. Yeah, Jason, it's nowhere near as sophisticated as your setup. We'll get there one day. One day. It's gonna take my time. It's always the trouble when you start working in new things is the amount of equipment that you have to buy again. God damn it, I can't even see where I'm supposed to be putting some things. I have to bring down the I have to bring down the magnifier. I'm using flux. Yeah, I just realised I should just do it like this. You guys suffer a bit of a reflection, but at least I can see what I'm doing. Had I not had I not landed this display for under three hundred bucks at tax time, it's it would still be hand me down monitor like I've always used. Yeah, that four K display you've got's really nice there, Jason. That was a good pickup. Ah, I see where I've gone wrong.
<laughs> that is repackaged horse semen knock. <laughs> oh no. Philip, my reball jig just arrived. Going to go give reballing an SMC a trial. Well, good luck with that, Philip. I admire anyone who does an SMC reball. Uh, I just realised I need special. Uh, I need special values for this board. Uh, my resistors. Let's put some MOSFETs on. Oh wait, no, the LEDs are next. What have we got? Oh, that's great. 0805 is too big. 1206, 1206, 1206, 12. No. I've got no 0805, uh, 0603s. I'm sure I'll have them around here somewhere. When you're working on uh, USB circuits, USB 1 stuff, the most common values that I end up needing are 1.5K and 68 ohms. The 1.5K is sort of like an identification resistor that sits on the data positive line, I think it is, and it just lets the USB controller know that you've got a USB 1 device and I think it's like minimal power consumption or something. And the 68 ohms, they sit on up here and they're just uh, some sort of filtering along with the 3.6 Volt xenodiodes to ground. Okay. Oh, come on, Cry J. You see Lewis do the SMC reballing all the time. It's a vital exercise. If you want to be a MacBook repairer, you have to do your SMC reball. To be fair, I've yet to do one. I got really close to needing to do one with my very first MacBook. And thankfully, the fan blew the junk just slightly off to the side. Oh dear God, I can't. My hands don't want to go where I want them to. That's no good. Sadly, I could help Lewis with links. Um, Amazon had what I needed, but no PayPal. eBay has PayPal, but not everything I needed. Yeah. Yep, that's true. That's the way it goes. Hey, 
How bad is the sound of the um, extractor over the top of things? It's a good tea. It's pretty damn loud here. And I've got a hair on here that's probably a cat hair. UK rules? No, I definitely don't have my microscope. I'm not even 10% of the way yet on buying that thing. And it's going to cost me about a thousand Australian dollars. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, this is the really cheap, it's a cheap Logitech headset. It was the only one I could find in this town. To be fair, I probably should have ordered a better one by now. I mean, I'm sure if I paid 50 bucks, I'd get a vastly better one. This one was about $29. It's like a huge investment. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's just say it's better than the crest. <laughs> Now, I don't know how people can cope with um, their ultrasonic going and being in the same room. Uh, I mean, I'm partially deaf, and those things, they will drive me out of the room. To me, it sounds like two plates of, oops, it sounds like two plates of glass being rubbed against each other. Just absolutely bonkers. close-up cam like this. Well, I suppose you sort of mean a bit of a distance cam compared to his microscope. But uh, it is nice to have the sort of wide view of what he's working on. I think the poor guy just doesn't have anything left in terms of inputs. Wow, uh, that's a way too much solder there. Not that it's critical, but it just annoys me. Alright, capacitor time. Uh, where did I put my 100 microfarads? Oh, great. 10k. What are you? 100 nanofarad, I mean. 16 volt, 100 nanos. I think I'll spool out a few hundred into this. Oh, come on. I've had these containers, well, well over a decade now. And they're getting a bit brittle. So I'm worried half the time when I try to uh, separate them, they're going to shatter. And I'm going to be left with decade-old plastic stuck in my fingertips, bleeding and crying. Speaking of which, uh... Uh, that was a bit of a nasty accident yesterday there, Jason. Uh, let's 
My SM4 TP costs $800 thanks to taxes and duty. Yep, damn Europe. Uh, please don't catch the nitpicking syndrome Jason has. <laughs> uh, I think you mean the pedantic syndrome. Um, I think pretty much all of us have it at some point. I mean, I know there's been connections that I've made, and I thought, it's alright, leave it be, leave it be. And uh, it just drives you insane, and you have to go back and fix it up. Oh, cracky. I nearly lost all those uh, 100 nanofarad caps. Yeah, $800, it's about the same. It's To Australia, the bigger problem is the freight. But I know you guys over in Europe, you have the imp import duties, which is your problem. When I was living over in South Africa, I was horrified the first couple of times I ordered from Amazon to get some books. And they arrived. Uh, the books were nice and cheap, but then, by golly, I had to pay through the nose for the uh, yeah for the import tax. What's this? I've only got two capacitors on board. Oh yeah, that's right. Hm. I better write on this too. since I won't know otherwise 100 nanofarad 0603 16 volts yeah. at least I've got a chance of remembering what they are now Alright, so we've got the flyback diode, well it's not really a flyback diode, it's a suppression diode, and a couple of LEDs, the MOSFET, the microcontroller, and then the crystal oscillator, well it's actually not a crystal oscillator, it's a uh, ceramic oscillator, and I need to get some 0603 LEDs, so I'll be back in a second. Got my box of LEDs, and it seems like I've picked up the wrong ones. Great. This is just uh, full of. They're all 16 by 2 displays and bo bags and bags of just general 3 and 5 mil LEDs. Wrong box. <sighs> That's more like it. It actually says surface mount on it. <laughs> well, hopefully I've got some 0603, 12 to 12.06, 12.06, 12.06, 8.5, 
No, I think you're eight five. Eight five. Oh, come on. No. Nah. I have a horrible feeling I've got nothing but eight five and oh, what are these? You're eight five as well, but you are. Oh well. I guess eight five will have to be what it is. Come on. Oh, Amy. Uh, da, da, da. Well, I'm going to go with some... Since this is an internal um, device, I really shouldn't even bother with LEDs. I am just going to put it on... the switching output. There's no real need for me to put it on power good or anything like that. Because when it's plugged in it's either going to show up as a device as you're booting or it's not. Ugly joint. MOSFET. Alright, where have I put my MOSFETs? Oh, here we go. And for today we're going to use boring old 7002s. Let's see. Picked up. Oh, good. Thank you, Jason. You're keeping them occupied while I work. Thank you. I'll send. Oops. I'll send you the check. Oh no, you're good, Jason. <laughs> Believe me. At least if I know the entertainment's going on, I can get on with this work. And then I can just check the chat every now and then. At least this way uh, I can get things done quicker. Time for me to turn on the hot air, and I've got to put my 12 megahertz resonator onto it.
Now the big problem I find with this and hot air is these resonators just seem to love to fly off. Actually, maybe I'll put the chip down first. Yeah, every time I do these, I seem to do them in a different order. I'll just constantly change my mind. Alright. We'll just put you over there into the muck so you won't fly off anywhere. There we go. And for this I have to use my fingers. One thing I don't like about this board is when I put down the uh, pad layout for this chip, the pads are just simply just a bit too small, so I don't get a lot of room either side. Amy, I hope you enjoy that coffee. Nothing too dramatic going to be happening here. Just going to zip solder. Actually, I don't know if I can zip solder with this particular tip. Guess we'll find out. Yeah, that was good enough. Uh, why not go for hot air on the IC? Because it's a pretty big IC, and yeah, it's going to take a fair bit to heat up. And as you just saw, I can zip solder it. So I'm going to have to move, turn it around. Alright Jason, thanks for dropping in. Appreciate it. Yep, too much solder. Goodness. Okay. So let's see, you can. Ah, the auto focus is off. Oh well. Yeah, it's all clear. It's a dirty way of doing it, but it's a big chip, so it can handle the it can handle the physical abuse of having the legs dragged across up the soldering tip dragged across its legs. All right, Jason, enjoy your breakfast. We're going to have to go hot air now. Yeah, let's see. Probably going to go 4.30 and 
and drop down to 20% air this chip is going to go flying uh, you're on the move uh, I think that's good Seems alright. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, what now? Dun, 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 dun. Well, I suppose we need to plug the relay in. And i got to do this two more times after this. So anyone else doing any building today? Repairing, designing, drinking coffee? Oh, did anyone watch the um, Jessa stream about 12 hours ago, whatever it was? I had to leave just as... Um, what the? That chip doesn't look like it's... I had to leave just as Jessa was about to start arguing with the chap about um, the rice. Did I end up soldering the same side twice? I think I did. What a newbie. And the worst thing is, now that I've got the relay on there, I can have a hard time. I did. I soldered the same damn side twice. Oh my god. Completely defeated the point of me doing the chip first. I thought I passed out. Oh, you mean like on the stream this morning? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, did it turn into a... Yeah, Amy, it's another serial ATA relay board. Uh, yeah, did it turn into a big fight fest with Jessa? Or did the guy accept the error in his ways? I don't know whether it was his daughter with him or something, but uh, she looked like she was dying of shame there for a second.
name of Flux. She let him off the hook. Oh my goodness. After all the rage that we all have for rice fixes and she let him off the hook, I suppose in terms I suppose she was playing it smart. There's no point having a great big Jerry Springer event on the live stream. Yeah, it was the headphone jack repair, yeah. But he made mention of the fact um, at some point there was another piece of equipment that he'd used rice on. At least I seem to think he did. That's right. His story was that it worked when he recommended anecdotal at best. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nothing like good anecdotes to defeat a fact. Uh, I suppose we'll scrub this thing down with a bit of alcohol before that flux gets nice and crusty. Yeah, it was a simple dock replacement, yeah. A simple dock replacement that uh, took quite a while because there was a lot of chitter chatter, which is perfectly good. Alright, let's give this little baby a wash. And then I'm going to program it, which reminds me I need to find yet again my source code for that. And this is how I get my daily intake of unwanted alcohol. But yeah, I was just starting to get uncomfortable with the whole rice thing and then I had a customer turn up so I had to go out there and take their money. So I suppose it was a fair trade. Use rice, Ronnie, it's a San Francisco treat. <laughs> I'm just blowing the alcohol off here, I'm not actually doing any reflow. If you're wondering why I still use these monstrous 2 amp relays, it's because I bought a couple of hundred of them, I think about four or five hundred of them, and uh, yeah, since I've got it, since I know how they work, I'll just keep using them. Yeah, where's the toothpaste? Yeah, I'll save, the yeah, don't think so. so. I've got a bad habit of buying too many of certain parts. Um, I think probably the worst one to date was... Oh, I'll bend over here. I've got this ginormous movie reel and it is full of all these surface mount buzzers and like that. Oops. Come on, you can do it. There you go. So they were all meant for my uh, one of my products that I was manufacturing at the time and China sent me initially some samples and they were really good they gave me about uh, 92 decibel out of them when I overdrove them for very short periods and I thought beautiful this is what I want send me a reel and so I paid obviously a reasonable amount for that reel and the shipping and they get here and it turns out they gave me a slightly different variant. The variant they've given me is about one millimeter uh, shorter. And because of that one millimeter shorter aspect, instead of getting 92 dB out of it, I was only getting 82 dB. And it was completely useless for the product that I was manufacturing because it was a lost model, air, lost, uh, model aircraft alarm. And so you wanted 92 dB or even better if you could. And these 80, 82 dB type things, it was just useless. So I've had that reel there as a reminder to me to, um, I don't know, be more cautious. Uh, your favorite buzzers, yeah. What do you, uh, did you make the board? This board, yeah, I've made. Um, 
let's see what are you turning on and off stray I'm using these to uh, control uh, the power to a SATA drive you know serial ATA drive so basically you have a uh, 5 volt 12 volt come in here and then out here you have 5 volt 12 volt here we go if I flip it over it's easy to read pardon me and then it's just like yeah normally open normally close whichever way you want it around and the reason why I do that is when you're doing uh, data recovery of something like DD Rescue, some drives will fail after a certain amount of data you've pulled off them and you need to power cycle them to start the process again from where you left off. And that's a real pain if you have to take the drive, even if you've got a loadable tray in your uh, recovery server, you have to keep flipping it out and back in. So using one of these, I can just do it all in software. Belgium Online. Hello, Jabara. With Trump in the country. Oh, you poor person. Oh, my goodness. Trump is, i got to admit, he's got good comical value. That's for sure. It's almost like it's not real. Yeah. Alright, the next step on this is I have to flash the board which means I have to find my program. Unfortunately I know where my programmer is today. No fake news. The guy knows how to play the system. I'll give him that. He's really good at that. Yeah, he acts dumb and stuff like that. But it's all to his own advantage. I'm sure he's laughing behind that toupee or whatever he's wearing. Okay. Alright, I'm going to have to... I'm just going to do some organizing on the screen and then I'll switch over. I'm trying to get the hang of this whole open, bo uh, open broadcaster thing. He's a fucking mental midget. <laughs> yeah, but he's a reasonably rich one. I mean, he's not the richest, but my God, he made it to the presidency. I mean, that in itself is pretty just amazing. Uh, I kind of wonder, perhaps we should just have Frank Underwood. <laughs> All right. Philip, yes, I think much acting is involved. Uh, it's sort of like play... Play like you're an idiot so that people don't um, sort of attack you in the same way. G'day, Marek. Nice to see you. Welcome back to the TARDIS. Alright, now I'm just going to switch my screens around a bit here. Staying up long again? Of course I'm staying up late again. When else am I supposed to get work done? Alright. Oops. Wrong, wrong, wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Sorry. Anyone who knows Scrubs will know that tune. Let's see. <laughs> I seem to have lost my power switch thing. Time to secure shell into my other machine. And try and find the software that I'm looking for. Let's see if I can destroy open board view. Let's see. I mean, open broadcaster. That is not what I was looking for. Let's see. Down, down, down. No. Up, up. 
I'm all over the place here, sorry folks. Well, that'll do. Uh, laptop cam, what's going on with you? Jeez, how do people manage to do this so well on the fly? No. Oh, that's right, I can't grab that panel. <laughs> Sorry, I was being an idiot. I was trying to grab the panel in the um, open broadcaster window. Alright, let's see. Video kept. Put that there. No. What doesn't help is the. Um, the camera names get switched around when I reboot, which is unfortunate. Okay, let's see what we can do. SCP. Uh, Might be better if I copy the one that I've already worked on. They set up predefined scenes in Open Broadcaster. Yeah, I've got three different setup ones, but I just haven't um, really fine tuned them. And like I said, I've got to set up my Linux so that when it boots, it will uh, name the cameras appropriately, as opposed to just whichever one responds first. Atmel Protus. Oh, I should have it in here already. Alright. Projects, power. Oh, there it is there, like an, like an idiot. Alright, firmware. Should I just make. <laughs> so I want make fuse tiny 2013 and make flash. Okay. Let's, hopefully this won't bring down everything. As I try to remember which one's which, I think it's this way. There we go. Make flash. And that's just slightly out of screen. There we go. Pseudo make flash. Nope. Just going on. Oh, I haven't got the power going to it. Invalid signature. Someone did a bad job. Okay, and I can I felt the relay kick in. So that's good. Now the only thing I have to do next, I just realized I have to uh, do the fuses which I always forget. Fuse Tiny 2313. 
Q's tiny twenty thirteen. And hope I don't fuck it up. Okay, we're good. Yeah, sadly, Jason, when I'm in this workshop, I have to resort to being a modern, non-hipster person and use a wireless keyboard. I've got quite a lot of these. That's why it's got a number on it. I find them very convenient when working on client machines because obviously it means I don't have to touch their filthy stuff. If there's one thing... Yeah, I'm not a complete germaphobe or anything but um, laptops just yeah I'm sure we've all opened up enough to give us the heebie-jeebies used to use the AT90 yeah the 18 that actually threw me for a long time I didn't realize that the 90 S2313 was different at least I'm pretty sure it was different to the tiny 2313 At least that's my memory of it, anyway. Alright, let's see if I can go back to my scene mix. Let's see if this works. There we go. Oh my god. I'm almost becoming slightly proficient. And here we go again. Start at the beginning. Do it the other way. I'll bring the camera in. Is that focus tolerable? Uh, ecstatic bass. Uh, there's something rather gross about using someone else's keyboard and laptop. I agree. I agree. I'm a janitor part time, yeah. I'm sort of like, more like a janitor full time. I haven't really done a lot of good design work in a long time now, so I'm definitely back to the janitor phase. Alright. We'll start again. I sound a lot morpheus then. Again! Uh, let's try and build this thing using just our mind. Tiny was a pin for pin replacement, although I never used them. Ah, oh, okay, good. So I wasn't uh, losing my mind then. Yeah, it was a pin for pin replacement, but obviously, as I found out, um, the firmware naturally happens to be different. Ah, oh, sorry, folks. Time for the uh, time for the background ASMR to come on again. Alright, that was a bit quicker. Hi Jay, yes, it annoys me even when co-workers use my keyboard at work. They could have been picking their nose or scratching their bum. Yep, too right. Good thing I work for myself. <laughs> I do need to buy myself uh, more of these keyboard, my IBM keyboards, although obviously they're now produced by Unicomp. But yeah, uh, I need to buy at least two more.
I remember a few times when I used to do hand pick and place with stencils and uh, solder paste and things like that. I would do, say, a batch of 10 or 20 of the little boards that I was doing. And every now and then, if I was having a bad day, I would happen to, because I would have to carry out the tray with the boards and all the parts on it. And every now and then, I would bump into something on my way to the reflow oven, and it would like all fall over and have a couple hundred pick and place parts just everywhere, and the paste smeared all over the boards. And usually, I'd have to retire for the day then because otherwise, I would seriously go and kick something probably a wall and then I'll break my foot ok, two caps are in yeah, ecstatic bass, that's right all the other little stuff that falls off when you're working on things I mean, I'm disgusted by my own uh, keyboard when I clean it every now and then it's like, ugh it's bad enough when it's your own scum, let alone someone else's. I need another pair of tweezers. Oh. It's sad to me that these I worked out I bought these for about two ninety five. And these ones I bought for about thirty dollars. And I much prefer the 295 ones. Personally, I blame Lewis for that. Um, he was going on about tweezers and everything, and it got me all excited. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to try some really good tweezers, yeah. And so, sure enough, I went out and got them, and then I went, eh, they're not as good as I thought. So, what can I say? Um, I was influenced by TV. I'm not careful, I'll start saying things like repeal and replace. Picking up bad habits. Let's see. Jabara, yes, um, I have three cats. So, yep, I sure do pick out quite a lot. put that resistor. I swear I had a resistor just then. Clearly I didn't. Alright. So, da -da. Oh man. Chat's jumped away from me. Greasy tablet screens are worse. Yeah, but at least the tablet screen, it's yeah, glass and you can just get your nice dosage of alcohol and drown them. Okay, not drown them, obviously. But, uh, at least we aren't looking at, we aren't Lewis working on cockroaches and dead ants. Um, I kind of prefer the dead ones rather than the live ones. I had a laptop in here perhaps 18 months ago and when I opened it up it had a farm of, uh, I think they call them German cockroaches I don't know why they call called German cockroaches but that's what they are, they're all different sorts in there and it took me about six months to round up and get rid of all of them from my house after that because they just ran everywhere Let's see, Philip, I had a MacBook come in which had, and I'm not exaggerating, a couple of spoonfuls of sugar scattered across the key. What, was someone eating breakfast on it? <laughs> Maybe donuts. Lewis is awesome. Listening to him go off on people for the level of stupid... Yeah, yeah. Lewis is um, 
I mean, I, get me. I wouldn't be into any of this right now uh, if it wasn't for Lewis. I mean, I've done electronics for a long time, but I never thought to do like YouTube or anything like that. So I imagine Lewis has influenced a lot of us in a positive way, uh, sort of reignited my passion, that's for sure. And of course, with the open board view, Oh, that was uh, six, seven months worth of hard coding. Lewis making cash again. What's he making cash on? I don't know what he finds in the boards. I don't know what happened. He opens it and finds a coffee or a cat pee. Oh, yeah. Cat pee is the worst. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love my cats, but in this room... Uh, four years ago, a cat had an accident or whatever, it peed on the carpet, and I've soaked that and soaked that, and I can still every now and then smell that cat pee, and if my cats ever get into here, they also know it's there, and the first thing they do is they go over to it and rub themselves onto that spot, and I'm like, get off there, so you filthy little blighters. Alright, let's do the other half of these parts. I was yakking for so long, the tip went cold. I don't really like this holder. It wobbles around too much. I need to put some shims under the under the T-bar. But I found that I need to use this sort of low holder. Uh, normally I have an Omnivice or you know, one of those parametric or whatever you call them. Those vices that can swivel in all directions. But they stand too high off the desk and so I feel like I'm doing this when I'm soldering. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, what about you two? Cash on the tools you buy. Oh yeah, yeah. I should add a donate button to open board view. Um, I do have a. If you go to my actual website, um, which is in the description by the way, just below this. If you look at where it says main site, uh, that's sort of my central site. There is a PayPal donate facility. Otherwise, there's always super chat. But um, the other problem is with the open board view donations is that there's more than one of us doing it. I mean, okay, I mean, I did the bulk of the work for the latest revision. I mean, Chlorodite produced the original one that Lewis found, and then I took it from there. So sometimes I get a little bit unsure about that. Uh, Pianov does a lot of work on file formats for me. Alright. Uh, what am I after? My xenodiodes. Oops. Yep. You gotta dance around saying fifteen dollar. Oh wow, that's a little rich. I thought the standard was two dollar. I was like, yeah, two dollar. I will take my shirt off for two dollars, which I won't. Not half because it's a little bit cool here, not much. But it's about it's about twenty two degrees or twenty two centigrade, whatever you wanna. Uh, I'm not more spit now. Cry J. Kids should get cheap electronics at the most. Yeah, I tend to agree. I get a lot of um, I get a lot of phones here, screen breaks and things like that. Oh, we're talking iPhone 6s, iPhone 7s. I don't fix the 7s uh, yet. 
and they're just school kids. And the parents give them to them, and I'm like, blimey heck. How rich are you? And of course the trouble is, the kids usually don't understand the concept of why it's ex you know, expensive or whatever. And they're just kids. Some of them... Uh, wow, that was a... That's really dodgy, Paul. Come on. Get some heat into that. There we go. That's a nice fillet. Some of them have respect, but by and large, I get kids that smash the screen one day, and then the next week they're back again with another smash screen. And the yeah, parents just keep forking out the money. And then, of course, the worst thing is they look at me as if I'm some sort of um, scammer or something. It's like, well, we just fixed this last week. It's broken again. It's like, well, how's that my fault? Another late, yeah, Joshua. Yes, another late one. Player Meta Man, I'll just see you there. Let's see. Just read. Um, yeah, Meta Man, that was my fault. It, um, when I hit the start streaming, I forgot to change the title, and then I changed it afterwards. So, my apologies, sir. Let's see, well I don't know about writing something like Boerview, which is a fantastic piece of code. Personally, I'm more into crypto software myself. Ah, very good. What sort of uh, crypto software do you do? Anything to do with decoding iPhone backups? Because I've got a piece of software that I wrote that will decode the um, iPhone iTunes backup, but only if it's not an encrypted one and to be honest I don't have a lot of inclination right now to add the extensions required to handle the uh, password supplied decryption it's just like no, I have not yet encountered uh, an iPhone backup that is encrypted or when I say encrypted yeah, it's uh, password locked who is Chloridite? Chloridite is the person that originally wrote Open Board View about a year ago and beyond that I actually do not know who Chloridite is I don't even know if they're male or female to be honest they could be either um, we had a couple of very short conversations and then that was it they just disappeared I've never seen them since so apparently they did it as to make their work job easier um, but yeah, so it bothers me a little bit that I've never been able to get back in touch with them. But who knows, maybe with their job they were just happy to provide that first release. And then when I kind of stole the show a little bit and just wrote everything and forced everyone to do things my way. Um, I guess they were happy to let it go at that. Which I must say is quite rare. Usually if someone produces a project like that, um, they will hold on to that and fight for it tooth and nail and dominate it as much as they can. It's just, you know, human nature. So I don't know who they are, but they seem to be... You know, I'm very impressed by the way they've gone about things. Cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin, blimey heck, uh, Bitcoin. Okay, so what's the deal with this new one? That's um, what is it? Ethereum or something like that. I was looking at it and I was thinking of maybe buying a hundred bucks worth of Ethereum just to see what happens to it. So 
Stray 77, I've got a stick vice, I love it, but only after replacing the replaceable plastic jaws with aluminium ones. <laughs> yeah, okay, imagine how that would go over the hot air. Yep. Currently we're stuck at 21 million is maximum global amount. Oh, right, yes, with the uh, bitcoins, yeah. Yeah, I always thought that was the interesting aspect of Bitcoin, sort of ramming its value up by artificially limiting it. Yeah, I suppose that's the choice. Alright, time for the next chip. I know, I'm handling the chip without static precautions, God help me. Never owned a tablet and I still don't see the point of why I should get one. Yeah, Mark, the only... Uh, the only purpose I have found for a tablet, myself, is something I can stick on the wall so I can watch my security cameras. And that is it. Well, maybe I stick uh, Gmail or something like that on it to give me notifications. But yeah, as a general purpose device, hell no. Cryptocurrency fine until quantum computing. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. I suspect, though, that uh, quantum computing is going to be a little further off. Particularly to that level. I mean, it's pretty damn hard just trying to keep 10 qubits alive. Uh, da -da. One tech journalist has 7 bitcoins. Holy crap. That person would be well off. Ethereum is okay. Okay. Let's do the disgusting drag solder here. Alright. I like putting my X2012 in tablet mode when I need to... Oh, okay. That's one of those um, reversible laptops. Get off there. Yeah, everybody gets paranoid about static so long as you touch the device before installing chip. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, it's a good marketing ploy. Someone's laughing their way to the bank every month with their royalties check on that sort of crap. Alright, come up to hot air time again now. Let's get some uh, solder on those pads. Let's lift up that. And find my resonators. Where's my resonators? Ah, oh, there they are. So what other projects is everyone working on? Software, hardware, making it through the day alive. Oh crikey, do not drop that crystal. There we go. My current Bitcoin, 7153 BTC. I'll be honest and say I'm not sure what that means. Oh. Does that mean you have 7,153 Bitcoins? No, that would be something. <laughs> I turned off my hot air now to set my settings back. This is where I wouldn't mind something like a uh, the, those quick hot airs. Where you can have some settings pre-built into them. Because it's interesting. This one 
forgets my air setting but remembers my temperature setting. Have you ever soldered with a straight a hot straight blade screwdriver? Oh only been extremely desperate and definitely not on electronics. What's it? I'm poor, I need food, please bro. <laughs> uh, get out of the way, Jason. This is my channel. Uh, God, how many of us are broken poor like that? This is the trouble when you're a bit too... Shh, truth, I nearly put hot air onto the webcam. This is why I need to get a microscope. That would have been most unpleasant. A molten Logitech C922. Oh uh, yeah, that that just sat down, so I'm happy. Yeah, Philip, I think when this one dies, I'll look at one of those quicks. They certainly seem to be getting a pretty good review. Okay, time to put our relay on. Unless you don't, haven't already heard, you may know I actually quite hate pin through parts. In the late 80s, when surface mount was starting to make an appearance and everybody was crying about it, saying it'd be impossible to repair, I was like, finally, finally, I can see where the parts are and see where the tracks are and just do everything on the one side so sick to death of having to flip boards over back and forth just to see what where the parts are going needless to say a lot of people thought I was a bit insane maybe they're right okay let's see if we can just flash this um, da -da. Let's try that scene change again. Oh, look at that. Marvellous. Marvellous. An M A R A V E L L O U S. Right, I'm starting to, starting to take on Chris Long traits of singing in the middle of things. I'll probably get a YouTube strike for that. No, wrong way. Service mount has always seemed easier to me than through hole. I agree, Joshua. Absolutely. Waiting on a new heated bed for my 3D printer. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's another thing I haven't gotten into, which I probably should. It's just a case of there's so many things to uh, try out these days. And everybody's exposed to all of it. Now I've got to make sure I do the flash first. And then do the fuses. And here we go. That's another one working. That was a bit quicker. <laughs> Are you hacker? No, I'm definitely not a hacker. Not even close. Although, if you use the original nomenclature for what a hacker was, then yes, I am. But if you use the modern one, which is to infer a cracker, then no, I'm not. I used to get a lot of people thinking I'd break into banks or stuff like that. And I was like, nope, 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 that's not me. Okay. And I think the last hacking movie, cracking movie I watched was uh, the one with Robert Redford. What was that called? Um, anyone remember? Was it? it had the blind guy in it. And I just remember the scene where I spent ages going over what they're going to do about this uh, locked door, which was blocking their way to get to the safe or something. And in the end, they said, "Oh." He says, do this, do this, uh-huh, uh-huh, oh, uh -huh. okay. And then he just kicks the door in. 
but that's what a hacker would say. Oh great, here we go, we're going Monty Python now. It's like, I'm not the Messiah. Only the true Messiah would say such the denies existence. I'm not. You must be. Alright, I am. He is the Messiah. Yeah. Yeah, that movie, those movies really got what it's like to be human. Sneakers, thank you very much. Yes, yeah, that was. I enjoyed that movie. It could have been because I was only probably like 12 or 14 at the time. They have completely changed the meaning of that word. They are taking our words away. Yes, they are. And I think you would find Lewis would be right on board with you there. With all his um, various political terms. Like anarchist. And then they stole his Pepe. The guy's going to end up with nothing. He's going to have to create his own language soon. Oh, I think that's... we're good. Uh, let's see... You could call me a cyber security specialist of sorts, though. Security audits are completely legal. Yeah, they are. I also do physical penetration testing. Yes, I do physical penetration testing, but um, not with... Con anyway, do not go to that topic, Mr. Daniels. Otherwise, I'll get a angry person at my door. Yes, I was desperate. I was given a PC with a chip that had one side pins lifted off the PCB. Vertical hot screwdriver piston. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least it would have been consistent. A yeah, nice flat broad blade, so you wouldn't have pushed one or two pins out of the way. Yeah, the things you do when you're desperate. The things you do. Yeah, man. Like right now, here I am doing YouTube live videos without a microscope. But then again, for this sort of work, a microscope is actually completely useless because it's too close in. Oop, there goes my hot air. I love that. Especially like hackers with Johnny Lee Miller. I can't remember that one. I used to hack satellite encryption, but then it got too good. Um, with things like the satellite TV and all that, the, it was a DTS or whatever, you know, I loved that story about how they ended up um, pretty much producing game over for everybody by slowly downloading their um, lockout program bit by bit with each update. I thought that was a Fantastic bit of strategy. Ah, come on. Find something else to. Yeah. Someone needs to make Teflon tweezers. Actually, they do exist, I'm sure. But I'm sure they wouldn't help me. All that will happen is that everything I want them to grab onto, they will not be able to grab onto. Hackers was a great movie. It was a bit more flash than most of us see on our screen. It was fun to watch though. Angela Jolene was in it as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that? There was... One of them was truly god-awful. So bad that I don't think I even ended up watching all of it. Um, I can't remember if it was the one with Sandra Bullock in it or not. But it's... Yeah, there's certain suspension of reality that you can take and then... Sometimes things just go too far. Oops. Do not put it on that one. Put it on that one. So, any... Oh. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. I love you. Sorry, that was my wife just checking in on me to make sure I was still alive and wasn't face down on the bench top with a soldering iron through my eyeball. 
and also checking to see if I wanted any food. How awesome is that? And it's 1.46 in the morning, which means I'm probably going to have um, turkey bacon on toast with egg. Okay, it's not really turkey bacon, it's just sliced turkey spam of all things, would you believe? And you fry it up with olive oil, and it pretty much turns into turkey bacon. And you can't really tell the difference, which is good, because I'm not into eating ham or anything like that. Just a personal preference. Ah, uh, why don't you solder? Why are you no solder? Okay, that's better. Wives are so amazing, those most certainly are. What about Johnny Mnemonic? Yeah, I don't remember seeing that one. Ah, the net, that was it. That's okay. Oh, hang on there, guys. Just a question, is there any chance that a replacement screen for a Samsung S7 is going to be affordable? Well, fat chance of that, I'd say. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but ever since the... Well, other than the S3 and S4, I no longer go anywhere near Samsung's, and I don't actually replace the screens on the S3 or S4 anymore either. Uh, I just had far too many cases where you would put a new screen on, it would seem okay, and then a week later it's dead because of you know some sort of stress factor. And it's not even your fault. It's just yeah, those screens cost me a fortune. So they are off my list. I only do the iPhones now, and if I do anything else, it's going to be data recovery and nothing else. If I see those other phones, the first thing I think of is I am going to lose money if I touch that thing. And realistically, at the end of the day, I've got to think about making money. Because, I mean, this is fun, but even this here is for... Um, commercial reasons. Let's see. Can we place a food order too? <laughs> yeah, what would you like from the Daniel's Kitchen? We can guarantee we are not going to deliver. I need to get a better light as well. I mean, this is fine for just me, but I can see it's probably causing a lot of dramas on the YouTube stream. And I know it produces a fair bit of hum. Speaking of which, my capacitors were supposed to arrive, but yeah, it seems like maybe they don't make them anymore and I'll have to order some different ones. Johnny Pneumatic was the Keanu Reeves one. Yes, I've heard about that. I've wanted to see it, but I've never been able to get my hands on it. So the trick is heating them up. A heated vacuum chamber helps even... Yeah. yeah. I only like the first Matrix. Yep, yeah, I agree. They should have... Wait a second. Damn it. I stuffed up on my geek card there. I should have said... There's only ever one Matrix in the first place. What are you talking about, man? Damn. 
I failed that test. Alright, let's get our MOSFET. Keanu Reeves with a doubled hard drive and his head holding a cure for... Oh man, that sounds so bad. No chips for the kitchen, from the kitchen. Oh man, hot chips, oh, love that. And a good slab of freshly battered or crumbed fish, yes please. Uh, which reminds me, I've been, I was watching Gordon Ramsay Disaster, kitchen disasters a little bit today, just in between things. It's training for me. Training to be able to cope with people having meltdowns around me. Way too much solder on those. I like the first two Matrix movies. The third one was a lit. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then I got the real feeling on the fact that they kind of pushed the whole religious tilt on it. Uh, Battlestar Galactica, the new one, that also made me rage at the end. Well, they didn't have to go that way, but they did. I thought, why? Why? You have more of an accent than Australian. Yes, Philip, I do. I've got a couple of different accents thrown in there. Um, there's a bit of South African. There's a bit of British. And of course, this is Australian. One voice I simply cannot do is American. If I try to do the American accent, for some bizarre reason, I end up sounding Indian. Like, not American Indian, but Asian Indian. I have no idea why, but I said I do. Of course, my wife finds it absolutely hilarious. The fact that I fail so badly at that. Where's my dad? Come on, we're almost at the end here. And then everybody can go home, and I can eat. Can you do a Dave Jones accent? Actually, I really don't think I can. Uh, he's, that chap is quite something with his accent. Uh, about the only time I've ever caught myself sounding like him is when I'm sort of all excited about something. He's like, hello? Hello, what's this then? Hello? But uh, I can't get the pitch that he, go, he gets. I don't know how he does it. It certainly makes him quite distinctive. He lives quite a distance from me. Probably about 3,000... Uh, probably about 2,500 kilometres away from me. That's always a fun thing with Australia. It's a f flippin' big place. Alright. Chip time. It's the, it's the amalgamation accent. Yes, that's exactly right, Cry J. You can leave Texas, but the accent comes with you. Yeah, it's, um, 
I suppose one variant I've heard of that term is um, you can take a person out of Texas but you can't take the Texas out of the person and substitute whatever country or state you want and whatever gender you like. So I take it you all originated perhaps um, watching Lewis Rossman streams? Yeah, Dave has great content, even if he does tend to prattle a bit. <laughs> just don't ever tell him that. He'll only just prattle on more for you. It's the gift that keeps on giving. I do like his attitude, you know, his, he's not afraid to put his face into something, which is good. Well, a lot of people do shy away from some things, I mean, God knows I certainly do, but no, not Dave. Likewise with Lewis. I really enjoy the way that he just throws himself into these things. And not just blindly, you know, without uh, forethought or anything like that. Yeah, you know, there's, there's genuine uh, logic behind it. It might not always be something I agree with, but I always admire it. That's a uh, big Clive. Now, see, big Clive, someone I haven't watched. I'll be honest. Um, and also, let's see, who's another? AVE. I've seen one or two videos. I think it was destroying a Dyson hairdryer. I remember that. Other than that, no. Nah, it's not that I don't specifically like them or anything like that. It's just a case of. Yeah, there's a certain amount of time in the day, and I probably indulge a little bit excessively on Lewis, Jessa, Chris, and Jason. And then when I'm done with that, um, I will tend to pick up a random selection of other videos from snippets of Family Guy to tanks to model aircraft to uh, real aircraft. Yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. Jason says, I think that's true. I don't believe I have a single sub that is not also a Lewis sub. That's probably quite true, yes. <laughs> Julian liked to the great Scott. Big Clive is great. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to watch Big Clive one day just to see what the fuss is about. Um I know quite a few people have spoken about him. And yeah, of course, oh, the other person I watch a lot is um, Cody's Lab. I don't know if any of you guys watch Cody's Lab. Are you staying on 30% here? I'm just waiting for my hot air to pick up. Yeah, Cody's lab was a bit of an accidental find for me, but I am glad I found it. Uh, the guy does some really interesting things with mining and stuff. Just anything. Oh my, the Paul Hogan show. <laughs> That's a long time ago. <laughs> Back in the days when we mostly had British TV over here in Australia, and we had Are You Being Served and uh, Open All, Open All Hours was it, with um, the Ronnie and uh, I forget the other guy's name. 
and then of course the two Ronnies, the goodies, all the good stuff. Yes, Prime Minister. Now, I remember watching the two Ronnies probably perhaps a few years before I was capable of understanding what on earth they were going on about half the time. Cody's Lab, yeah, some of his mining videos are interesting. The frozen bullet thing was interesting too. I didn't get to see that one yet, I'll have to go have a look at that. He gold plated some stainless steel measuring cups for his mum. Yeah, I saw that on the video feed, I haven't got a chance to see that one either. I do like the ones where he goes out hunting for um, yeah, the precious metals, like the one where he extracts platinum from the road dust. It's a bit of a shame that his mine is predominantly, seems like it's just lead and mercury at the moment. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, it looks like I moved my board before that solder was um, ready to go. That solder was not set when I moved it. You can see here, it's drifted back in. So I'm going to have to pull that back out. This is the trouble I'm using 6040 solder rather than uh, 67 30, uh, 30, sorry 6337 which I should be using. Now I'm going to need more flux. Is there somebody that wants to buy this? Amy, yes, they, um, pre this is a prepaid order. There's a person who wants these. They paid me ages ago and I've got to admit I've been a pretty bad person and haven't um, delivered. And I thought, i better get it done. Nerd Rage is another channel. Haven't seen that one. Haven't heard that. Nor Mr. Carlson's lab. Haven't seen that. There's a lot of stuff out there. With the limited amount of time each day, I guess we don't get to see everything. Alright, let's hope this one builds properly. And I can then retire for the evening. Let's turn off that, turn off that. Let's switch over. Marvellous. Uh, grab my keyboard. I do genuinely want to change this to a mechanical keyboard. Particularly if I'm doing coding like I did the other night with the uh, low ohms meter. It's extremely frustrating trying to code with a just a you know these uh, non-mechanical keyboards. Uh. YouTube addiction. Yep, that's pretty much the truth of it. Okay, and we're good. It light up. So I'm happy with that. Uh, I can't really test these properly at the moment because instead of having a USB socket on these, it's just a. Oh, I'll switch over to. You idiot. Uh, let's try that. That's good enough. Um, yeah, I've got a just a four-pin header here. And that's our USB lines, uh, positive, negative, data plus, data minus. So that's basically it for the night. We've it's taken me about three times longer to do them than it normally would, but that's what happens when you live stream, and yeah, it's all part of the fun. Okay, turn off my hot air, and let's have a look at some chat. Um, I like watching Ben Heck, Mr. Carson's lab, and 
the post-apocalyptic inventor. Ah, here we go. Are you good to go, are we? Alright, I'll, um, two minutes and... Yeah, okay. Alright, the timing's perfect. Um, my food order has just arrived at the door, so I am going to finish up here, go off, and just scrub my hands because I didn't wear gloves. I'll have to go alcohol first and then um, dish soap, stuff like that. And then I can tuck into some food. What have we got? Two o'clock in the morning, about 15 minutes, and uh, try to get some sleep after that. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching. I appreciate you sticking around while I built those three things. And, well, maybe I was thinking tomorrow I might do some programming on the low ohms meter to change it from the original firmware that it's got and uh, make it... Sorry, I just... Let's see if we can get... Nah, that's it. <clears throat> make it so that it's better for doing shorts detection. So I will change um, the display and put in the voltage that it's reading off the ADC and then for the uploaded PC information I was thinking I can make it so if you put it into a mode where it will beep if when you test something it's of a lower resistance than the previous time that you tested it so that way you can track your way through say on the VCC caps and if you sort of keep going along and it keeps beeping each time that means you're getting a lower and lower resistance each time you're trying until eventually it should stop beeping when you go to the next one which means you've passed the point of lower resistance and hopefully that's your capacitor that's causing the trouble so that's a theory um, we'll just have to cut some code to do that and see how it works out alright take care thank you all for watching I'll see you guys next time